Brian and Kerry are right here. Take care. Great, thank you. Hello, Kerry, and hello, Brian. How are you? Hello. How are you? Can you hear okay? Uh, it's a little low, but we'll uh, we'll manage. <laughs> we'll try and we'll try and speak closer to the phone. Is that better? Yeah, that's 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 a lot better. So, uh, so we're here to talk about the candlelight concerts live at Montro, and um, you know, oh. Carrie. I wanted to start with your, your, your association with Brian, which, which dates back to when you were the understudy doing Eliza Doolittle back in 2001, 2002. Um, is, is your association with Brian, is this sort of a, a musical Pygmalion? Is, is he sort of your musical Professor Higgins where he's taught <laughs> you a whole bunch of stuff? <laughs> Oh, that's a very good uh, way of putting it. We've not, that's not been put to us before, but, um, well, in a sense, yes. I think um, it's definitely been uh, a sort of mentor to me over the years, yeah. I, I guess. Um, I think, um, especially in the studio, it, that was a very different um, place for me. I'd not had a lot of experience right. uh, recording, so definitely in that aspect. And I guess performing as well, because... Um, I was never really myself on stage before. I was always a character, so I've learned a lot from Brian, especially now that we perform together. I still, yeah. you know, I'm still learning every day. So yeah, you could, you could put it like that. I like that. It's an interesting way to put it. Now, now Brian, uh, my, my question for you is: Listen, uh, you're Brian. Yeah. You're, you're Brian May and Queen. You could probably ring up, you know, Mick Jagger or Robert Plant and say, "Come play with me," and they would. But but yet you're attracted to the the younger generation with Adam Lambert and with Carrie, what, what, what attracted to that younger generation? To the younger singers? No, I don't know if it's good. Um, well, it's just really, I guess it's organic really. You just, okay. you can only go with your instincts in this business. And, um, you know, the first time I saw Kerry sing, I was awestruck to be honest. She was only young, but the, the, the range and the power and the, and the range of emotion that she just um, kind of instinctively had in her vocabulary was, was just incredible. Because it's funny because it was the very beginning of all that. We've auditioned probably a thousand singers since then. Um, mm -hmm. But very early on, I just thought, you know, I, I don't know when I'm ever going to see someone that, that has this capability. So I, I was immediately, um, you know, inspired, I suppose. And Kerry took over, she created that role and we got to see each other. We got to do some stuff in the studio just to, uh, to see what would happen. And um, it, it grew from there. But she's an inspiring artist to work with. And, and the artists like that are few and far between. Oh, absolutely. Now, you sort of handpicked her to play Meat in the We Will Rock You musical, correct? We all did, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was an open and shut case. <laughs> now, uh, let's go back to you, Carrie. How was it, you know, standing on stage and, and being part of that musical and interpreting those songs? Um, what, how was the experience for you? Oh, it was incredible. I think, I think anybody that's been a part of We Will Rock You over the years will, will tell you the same thing. It's such a... It's such an enjoyable show to be a part of, to be, to sing those songs at the end, uh, you know, be a part of singing We Will Rock You and Champions and for everybody to stand on their feet and wave their arms is, you know, is, is fantastic. And especially to be a part of the show originally and to be able to put my stamp on a show right. and have a bit of an influence of the way a character's played is just is wonderful and something that will be there forever, which is great. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and Brian, you know, with the Queen songs, I mean, obviously you had Freddie Mercury and you had Paul Rogers come in and now Adam Lambert. Uh, and, and now on this Candlelight Concerts, you, you do a few of the Queen songs with Carrie. Um, it doesn't really seem to matter what the voice is, whether it's male or female. Those songs just always seem to work. And, and just what makes the Queen song so special? Oh, that's one of the questions that's impossible to answer, I think. Uh, there is a certain strength and magic to the Queen material. There's no doubt about that. Um, and I don't think any of us really know, knows where it comes from. Um, we were fortunate in having four different writers in the band, all of whom were kind of struggling for recognition, I think. You could put it that way. But also to be, you know, every artist wants to express themselves. Every artist 
everybody um, everybody regards their songs as their babies, I think. Right. So, you know, we were very competitive. And um, I think we're also quite in touch with normal people, in a sense. Right. Um, rather than, you know, we don't sing songs about what it's like to be a rock star on the whole. You know, we sing songs about normal people's dreams and ambitions and sorrows and disappointments. It, it's We sing about life and i think that's kind of universal and maybe that's why we cross all the barriers absolutely now your collaboration on record started with uh, carrie's album anthems and then over to acoustic by candlelight now this uh, blu-ray dvd cd package uh where do we go from here as, as a team well, <laughs> well we're both going to be very busy for the rest of the year okay sadly you know sadly i don't know but you know we, we have our uh tour with Adam Lambert and um, a lot of other things besides and Kerry has a lot of engagements coming up so um, but we'll we'll take it up when we can I think I think that's the answer I mean I think there's a long long way further we can go I think we only just got started really mm -hmm. and I love doing what we do yeah I, I mean to me you said this Pygmalion thing it's really mm -hmm. interesting you know yeah. it's not really like that for me you know to me it, in fact, I've never been very good at criticizing Kerry. <laughs> I find it quite hard to criticize him right. because I think I'm so sensitive of not wanting to interfere with a great nat natural talent. You know, so I tend to be quite um, nervous in in expressing myself in that way. But we've grown to understand each other, and and I've learned an awful lot too. I mean, a huge amount. So it's it's a very equal partnership, and. Um, I think very, very inspiring still. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now you mentioned that, that the Queen tour with Adam Lambert, uh, which is coming to Montreal this summer. Um, you know, back in the day, Queen had that Rock Montreal DVD and CD and that show back from 81. Uh, does the city mean anything special to you? Does the what mean anything? Do, does Montreal, the city of Montreal, mean anything special to you? Oh, sorry. Oh, well, great memories, yeah. I mean, we had fantastic. Queen shows there. In fact, um, when we wanted to record that, um, well, it wasn't a DVD in those days, it was a, a video. Was video. A video tape, a video copy. Um, yeah, we went to Montreal, Montreal especially because we knew it was a great audience and we would feel at home. Um, it was a bit of a strange experience for other reasons because the people that were filming us were um, quite strange and um, it was a kind of very fraught story um, involving Freddie getting really upset and annoyed and refusing to wear <laughs> the same clothes both nights. <laughs> so it was very funny and refusing to let our manager in the building. <laughs> great um, so well. in a but in a, sorry. Yeah but Montreal, you know, we we do have a history of great stuff there, yeah, And I can't wait to, to see what happens. Now will the the cancel light concerts come over to North America at any point? Well I think we need an invitation. <laughs> I'd love to do it. I would really love to do it. And, uh, you know, I, I certainly hope we will at some point. Um, we need to get the records out there. We need to, to start being known, yeah. you know, as for the partnership. Um, but, yeah, I would love to. I uh, will carry things. Now, Kerry probably can't be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. We, we just need an offer. That's what, like Brian said, we just need an invitation. <laughs> well, I think when you have Brian May in the band, the offer should be, uh, coming down pretty straightforward, right? I mean, it's not, you know, everybody wants Brian in their backyard, I think. Um, uh, Brian, if I can ask oh, you a couple... Know, it has to be not the... Pardon me? <laughs> in a way, it has to be not that. You know what I'm saying? It has to be the sort of genuine... Uh, right. Um, you know, an understanding of where we're at with this, which would be nice. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that people want to see me, but I'm, I'm hoping that they want to see this, I guess. But but uh, that, that's interesting. So where are we at with this? I mean, you're doing concerts or, or in Europe right now, and then you're doing this thing this summer, but do you get back together in the fall and start working on a, an album of all original material? Do you do a few more shows, or do you take a couple of years off from this project? Oh. <laughs> uh, we tend to play it by ear, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I think I would like to get back in the studio. We already do have some new material oh, recorded, right. and I think yeah. I would like to finish as an album I would love to do Anthems 2 because I think Anthems 1 was rather un underestimated so yes I'd love to do the, the second album mm -hmm. the Kerry second proper you know the Anthems yes. album yeah, that was great how was it producing her? 
Ah, <laughs> uh, it's great. You know, it, it's very low stress with Kerry, which I love. <laughs> you know, the Queen is always high stress because we always argue about everything. Kerry and I just instinctively, I think, generally see to see eye to eye on most things, and it's mm-hmm. just a joy. You know, I, I'll try some ideas and. Kerry will go in and sing, and, and generally what happens is I think, ah, she can do that and that, and then, you know, I'll revise my expectations, and um, the whole thing just grows very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now I see our time is is running down here, and I just want to ask you a couple of sort of off-topic questions, if possible. Um, you worked with KISS drummer Eric Singer uh, back in 2001, and you know, the band's going out this summer here with Def Leppard, but how was it working with Eric Singer as a musician? Oh, Eric's fantastic. I'm glad you asked me about him. (laughs) He's wonderful. Yeah, Tony Iommi um, gave me his number and said, you've got to try this guy, because I was looking for a drummer. Of course, I lost Cozy. Cozy and I were working and having a wonderful relationship. It was awful to lose Cozy. Absolutely. On the back of losing Freddie. You know, and Eric came along, and he's just full of life and jollity, and he's funny, and he's always drumming. I mean, 24 hours a day he drums, which can drive you nuts, <laughs> but, but he's wonderful. Yeah, and technically he's, uh, you know, irrefutable. He's just always on every single scrap of every beat, and uh, and he's great fun to be around so we do keep in touch me and eric yeah he's a great a great person um can i ask you quickly about what (laughs) (laughs) sorry yeah can i ask you quickly uh, what's the status of the freddie biopic um fluid (laughs) but but very healthy i think we just um I think we. Do, I think Graham just sacked another director, but you know, it, it, it's a turbulent path. But I think more and more, we have a very clear vision of what we want the film to be. So I think we're in a good state, and we have our star. You know, we have um, Ben Wishell on board, and he's crucial. He, you know, and already I feel like um, this is probably. I'm probably breaking all the rules here. There's probably still not an announcement there. But, you know, we we have been talking, and, and, you know, there's so much of Freddie in Ben Wishel naturally um, that I think it's going to be a a colossal experience to to have him in the film. Uh, So I'm hoping it's going to happen. Let's just say that I'm hoping that we're going to have Ben Wishel in the film. (laughs) Right, right, there we go. And and then let's just quickly talk uh, about you as a solo artist. Any uh, solo album coming down the road or or any solo tours? Or or are you pretty much, you know, dedicated to Carrie and to to the Adam Lambert and and Queen? Yeah, I mean, anything outside Queen, you know, I prefer to do with Carrie, really. So that has become my solo work. Yeah, I find it much more rewarding. I don't really want to just go out and whittle on guitar the whole time. I mean, maybe one day when I'm very old. (laughs) But at the moment, I like doing songs, and and, and working with Carrie is is a perfect opportunity. And then, Carrie, the the, the same question sort of goes to you. Uh, outside of working with Brian, are, are you coming over to Broadway? Are you doing anything on the West End? Another album? What are your future plans? Oh well, yeah, I never say never. I mean, I, I think with shows, it depends what it presents itself and is is right at the time. But yeah, we, hopefully Brian and I will do some more and you know continue this journey that we're on, and uh, you know it will it will just be really successful. But are and you we'll more- come to America? <laughs> 